Team Fortress 2 came out back in 2007, believe it or not. It's been 15 years since the game's release, and this is an incredible rare case where 15 years later the game remains highly popular, with even today the title drawing in 70,000 24-hour peaks. I mean, this game, you can see the player numbers have remained consistently solid in the tens of thousands and now in the high tens of thousands. Plenty of people still play this game, but unfortunately, many feel as though Valve hasn't shown this game the love that the community has shown, with Valve ignoring the game seemingly. It is currently plagued by bot infestation that has rendered it nigh unplayable for a lot of people. And this is a problem that especially became prominent in the last two years and has not really been addressed since. Here's an article from back in October of 2020 from New Sattle Advice that reads, Meet the guy fixing Team Fortress 2's bot problem with more bots. The popular online game is riddled with cheaters and bots, so this coder decided to make bots that go after cheaters and other malicious bots. Unfortunately, there's only so much one man can do. This was nowhere close enough to really fix the bot issues as a whole. Then we have an article from March 31st, 2021 from New Salad and Gadget, whose headline reads, Valve is still letting bots invade one of its longest running games. Team Fortress 2 has been nearly unplayable for over nine months. That number would, of course, grow. Here we have an article from April 2021. Team Fortress 2 bots now advertising paid for bot immunity services and links claiming to provide, yeah, some awful stuff. How bots disrupt Team Fortress 2 as a game has also gotten worse and worse over time. Here we have one more article from two months later. This article from Game Rant details how Valve released an update seemingly to help address this issue, but it basically did nothing. The headline reads, Team Fortress 2 players report bots are back the day after the update. Fast forward a year later to this month, May of 2022, and problems still persist. This is a Kotaku article published today whose Headline reads, Team Fortress 2 players beg Valve to acknowledge the game's bot problem. Beyond the fact that the game is infested with bots, the fact that Valve hasn't even said, we hear ya, we're working on it. The fact that there's a lack of a bare minimum level of communication surrounding an issue that is for many making this game unplayable is what's especially frustrating about all of this. Fixing a problem like this maybe takes some time, fine, but Valve haven't even let people know whether they're even working on it or not, so people are left to wonder what's going on, is anything gonna be done about this, or do I have to just abandon this game that has proven to be nigh impossible to play in scenarios where bots are infesting matches, which happens more often than not. Here's how Kotaku explains the issue. The issue is that bots, AI-controlled software playing the game, are dominating the maps, making the game impossible for normal human players to enjoy. Bots can snipe regular players with 100% accuracy. And this is just one of the ways that bots ruin the game. Here we have a Game Rant article from four days ago whose headline reads, Team Fortress 2 is being overrun by bots. Team Fortress 2's botting problem becomes so severe that players can't play at all, facing constant kills and being booted from servers. Yep, bots aren't just trolling players by making them unable to perform by killing them with 100% accuracy, they're also engaging in a way that gets legitimate players booted. Here's how Game Rant explains this issue in a more extensive way. Team Fortress 2 has been seeing a major botting problem since at least 2020, and it has arguably gotten worse instead of better. Valve initially addressed the problem in 2020, but the Team Fortress 2 patches were insufficient at the time, and the botting problem continues. Players report that they can't play the game at all on Valve's casual match servers due to an overwhelming number of bots that automatically snipe opponents the moment they appear outside of the team's base. The matter gets worse Worse, botters are now using tactics in order to purposely troll legitimate players outside of simply getting kills. Botting players have begun impersonating legitimate users to get them booted from the server in order to bring more bots in. Add to that a constant onslaught of spam and hateful comments in the voice and text chat, and players are more than fed up. So aside from bots wreaking havoc by essentially turning on god mode when it comes to aiming and shooting and spamming all of these awful comments, the way they are kind of disguising themselves as legitimate players has especially made the scene that much more chaotic. Beyond news salads, you've got content creators like this YouTuber, Squim Jim, who's kind of fed up about all this. He's a prominent Team Fortress 2 player, putting out there a call to action. So he begins by noting that there's just nothing that players can do. Valve is the only one who can fix their own game. He says, I'll tell you what we can do, me and you. What we can do is absolutely nothing. This is entirely 100% on Valve as a company. They're the only people who could stop it. That's it. 
But Valve has never even directly acknowledged that it's a problem. They've never talked about it. I mean, sure, they know, and they've made little band-aid fixes, and they've done stupid things like preventing free-to-play accounts from talking, but what has that done? It's done nothing. Sure, a, a total fix to this might take a while, but couldn't they do anything? Uh, couldn't they put matchmaking restrictions on accounts that get kicked from matches an excessive number of times in a short period? Every few months we get, quote, security improvements, but it doesn't really seem to do anything. And look, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Nobody does. They could have a 100% foolproof fix up and running by tomorrow for all we know, but uh, somehow I doubt that. If this had been a continuous issue that they actually kept us up to date on the fact that they were doing something about, I think we could cut them a little bit of slack. But they haven't, and we shouldn't. Valve's famous radio silence and lack of PR were annoying at the best of times, but now it's become really inexcusable. I think a lot of us went from having a pretty good view of Valve as a company to a straight up negative one over the past few years. Even before the bot problem, but that's definitely made it worse. And I'm sure there are people at Valve who do genuinely care, but their priorities are just on other things. Ultimately though, they're still totally okay just putting out community-made stuff every few months for some quick money, while the bots spam all sorts of terrible stuff on the chat and in the mic, and that just reflects very poorly on Valve as a company. A multi-billion dollar company. So yeah, aside from just the general lack of communication, the fact that they haven't even taken basic measures to mitigate this problem while they work on fully resolving this issue, which gives the impression that they aren't even working on resolving this issue. When they do put out an update, it seems to be focused on community-made content that can be sold, and they seem to be focused more on updating the monetization aspect of the game while doing nothing about the botting issue that makes matches is completely untenable and Squim Jim aptly points out that Valve is a multi-billion dollar company. There's just no excuse for them to not be able to hire a dedicated team to fix this issue and just get it over with. This problem, again, hasn't persisted for a couple weeks or a couple months. It's been years now. How is this still going on? With how long it's been since the issue has persisted and gotten worse, the community are fed up and are beginning to think of ways to protest. Here is what Squim Jim came up with. Here's what I did. I went to the people at Valve page and found every single one of them with a public email and sent them this. Header, TF2's rampant bot problem. Hi, you gotta say hi first. TF2's bot slash cheater problem has been a major classic, issue for classic. two years now. Very little has been done to address this problem and it hasn't been directly acknowledged by anyone at Valve or the TF2 team. If anyone at Valve could give the community an update on the situation and let us know what's being worked on and when it might be fixed, that would mean a lot. And if this email could be forwarded or shared to anybody more directly involved with Team Fortress, that would be very much appreciated. Thanks. There, it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. Uh, I even sent it to the big man Gabe himself. Is this email going to make a difference? Absolutely not. It will probably just be ignored. But what happens if they start receiving hundreds or even thousands of similar emails? So, his call to action is, here's a constructive, respectfully put, but direct email that highlights the issue, pleading Valve to please do something about this, and he's basically asking as many people who watch this video as possible, for those who care, to send this email over to Valve to as many people as possible, start to disrupt things a little bit, but still be respectful so that Valve will start actually taking this problem seriously because it's become a serious issue. And it's not as if this is some dead game or anything. This is a game that still draws tens of thousands of players every day, 70,000 in the last 24 hours. And the average players throughout the past couple of months have been sitting in the high tens of thousands. So this is a very active game, and it baffles me that Valve wouldn't just make the effort to fix this, given how much love there still is for this game whose reputation is starting to fall. And this growing community protest is something that IGN reported on in an article titled Team Fortress 2 Players Are Protesting the Game's Massive Bot Problem. They reached out to a number of prominent community members of Team Fortress 2, relayed their quotes, and IGN even tested Team Fortress 2 out themselves and reported similar things that the game is downright unplayable. Now IGN goes into people's theories on how this whole bot problem started. Most seem to think that things got aggressively bad around two years ago in early to mid-2020. Incidentally, this was around the same time that the Team Fortress 2 source code was leaked. While there's no specific proof, it may just be a coincidence, several community members pointed to that period as a tipping point. So while there's no concrete evidence, some are theorizing that the source code leaking has allowed these bot trolls to make bots just that much more efficient at wreaking havoc 
with source code in hand. Others are theorizing that this might all be a part of a bizarre revenge plotline where botters are rallying to try and make Team Fortress 2 so unplayable that Valve would be forced to pay attention to it. Basically, some are theorizing that botters are throwing a tantrum so that Valve will just pay more attention to this game that has become something of a neglected child. Others are saying that botters are doing this for profit, suspecting that bots are trying to acquire cosmetic items through play that they can then sell for real money on various marketplaces. Places, or plain and simply could just be that botters are miserable trolls and are out there enjoying trolling. And as other outlets have detailed, some of the ways that bots disrupt Team Fortress 2 include spamming chat with homophobic or racist remarks, outside links, or just plain rude or obnoxious messages. Most of the bots play as snipers, and because of their unnaturally precise aim, they're able to headshot and kill players almost instantly without giving them a chance to fight back. Some bots take on the names of other players in the match and then initiate votes to kick the original player Player, resulting in legitimate players being removed and more bots flooding in. Some legitimate players have complained that they've been kicked from matches simply for playing a sniper class because fellow human players assumed they were a bot. Other players have reported running across bots that caused the server to lag significantly or simply caused the game to crash if anyone tries to kick them. And none of this is limited to an occasional bot here or there. As Jacob Von Bugman, a regular Team Fortress 2 player, explained to me, there are people who pay for dozens of their own bots flooding servers, grouping up with one another, and overwhelming human players and in-game chat. Aside from the range of ways in which these bots can disrupt the game, the quantity of bots has been increasing, and it's just easier than ever for botters to continue trolling and disrupting a game that Valve should be supporting a lot more given how many players it continues to draw in. And there's literally an entire section here where the editor of this IGN article details their own experience with the game and they also said you cannot play Team Fortress 2 as it was intended. I decided to investigate the bot problem itself to see if it was really as bad as everyone described to me. It was, and you can read this for yourself. They basically describe having encountered the exact same issues that community members have been reporting about these last two years. This article concludes this section with, it was impossible to do anything resembling playing a normal match of Team Fortress 2. And having reached out to frustrated members of the Team Fortress 2 community, you've got people like Jacob Von Bugman talking about how so many amazing moments in Team Fortress 2 are now completely ruined by these uncaring instant killing nuances, and pleads to Valve that so many People are still enjoying this game and Valve needs to do something for us still holding on and enjoying their game 15 years later. Basically show some care and show some loyalty for the community that has kept this game alive and thriving for 15 years and counting. IGN even spoke to YouTuber Squim Jim who basically said at the very least some form of communication, some form of back and forth would alleviate people's frustrations. Just some acknowledgement that this issue is being worked on and being taken seriously and that it will be resolved sooner rather than later. Any kind of just acknowledgement would help but Valve can even muster to do that, which is the least they could do given how long this problem has persisted. Some people are contemplating quite literally going to Valve headquarters and protesting, recalling that incident in 2011 when Half-Life fans protested in front of Valve HQ for Half-Life 3. They were at least heard and they even talked with Valve. Perhaps the Team Fortress 2 community should do the same. This is indeed something that actually happened for those who didn't know about this. Here is a Kotaku report on that incident from back in August 17th, 2011. What did Game Mule say to the Half-Life 3 protesters. Valve did treat the protesters who came out to demand Half-Life 3 nicely, like bought them pizza and gave, gave them drinks and then gave them a tour of the studio and actually like had a conversation with them. There's even a photo of this posted by RTF2 bot. Here is a tweet that basically says the exact same thing this Reddit post says, but embedded on this tweet is this photo of Cabe Newell kind of coming out and greeting the protesters to have some kind of back and forth with them. Now, a prominent former Valve developer spoke out, Chef Falachek. He insisted that people should not do this, do not harass employees, voice actors, etc. Do form communities to play. There are so many amazing communities hosting games to play or making new mods. The Wave Zombie game in TF2 MVM is amazing. The TF2 community is amazing and better than this. And while I do agree that if protest escalates to a point where it starts to become harassment and violence, then that's a line that you shouldn't cross and those people should be shunned. It could also be argued that Valve could be better than this. Valve absolutely has the money and resources to fix Team Fortress 2. They're just choosing not to. And for a community that's been waiting so long and just had no communications about this, 
I hope he at least understands how frustrating this can be for those players who have been loyal to this game and, you know, who want to play this game because they love this game, have an attachment to it, and communities have been formed around it. But all of that is being risked by Valve's inaction surrounding this game. Now, the argument could be made that there are more important things to protest than the release of Half-Life 3 or the fixing of a video game. Sure, but just because there are worse things out there doesn't mean that a bad thing isn't bad, you know? And when a multi-billion dollar gaming company doesn't even seem to be making the attempt to meet their community halfway on an issue that is rendering a game unplayable, and when it feels like people are not being listened to, and when that's gone on for so many years and people feel the need to engage in some kind of disruptive action in the hopes that this will cause Valve to actually listen because right now it feels like Valve has gotten too comfortable ignoring the Team Fortress 2 community so they're saying let's do something disruptive since nothing else seems to be working and it's been two years since this issue has become this bad and it's gotten worse over the years. Things have gotten bad enough that the Team Fortress 2 community is even reaching out to Team Fortress 2 voice actors to see if they have any contacts, if they could somehow persuade Valve to do something about this. And one of the voice actors actually responded to the community, medic voice actor Robin Atkin Downs, who also, fun fact, plays Kaz Miller in Metal Gear Solid 5, among a number of other prominent roles. He's definitely a very prominent voice actor. He tweeted this, and this tweet, you can see, went viral, almost 40,000 likes. And Robin Atkin Downs basically relayed that he doesn't work at Valve, so no promises, but, you know, I'll try to reach out and see what happens. He said, TF2 community, I hear you. Please understand that although I worked as an actor on the game, I do not work for Valve because actors are essentially like freelancers. They are employed for the purpose that they're hired for, which is to bring a character to life and to provide their performance. But after that, a voice actor's tenure with the company ends. They're not a formal employee. So, you know, there's not that much Robin Atkin Downs can do about it. But that being said, I will do what I can to help you. I will contact those I know at Valve this week and ask them about the situation, which is very generous of Robin. He didn't even have to respond. He shouldn't really share the burden of this situation, given that he's not an employee at Valve. But he's provided more communication about this whole situation and given some form of relief. Unlike Valve, who's given the Team Fortress 2 community nothing but the silent treatment, and that's especially what's causing all this frustration. If Valve tells the community, here's what's going on, here's where we're at in resolving this issue, and we're going to do this, just please give us some time, then the community will be like, all right, there's some acknowledgement and they're asking us to wait, and you know that way they can be a bit more patient. But when you leave an already frustrated community in the dark, and when you leave them that way for multiple years, yeah, expect that they're going to start to get a bit more disruptive until they feel listened. I do think that what Squim Jim presented here is a good call to action where it doesn't feel like it's escalating to the point of harassment and violence, but is direct and is disruptive enough if it happens en masse that it could potentially cause Valve to reevaluate their priorities and actually give Team Fortress 2 the attention that it deserves. This game is too alive and well and thriving for Valve to let it go down like this. So fingers crossed with this recent wave of protests and reports and content creators speaking out that Valve will actually do something about this because there's just too much love around this game for Valve to treat it like it's a forgotten child. But that's just one man's take on this situation. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the bot infestation problem surrounding Team Fortress 2. And if you've played Team Fortress 2 recently, what has your experience been like with this game? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.